Morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke with Reverend Yutaka Yamada. Today being Saturday, the 4th of September or the 28th of July in the ninth year of Chong Yul Guk. So let's begin by offering a bow to our heavenly parents and true parents. Chariot. Kyombe. Paru. And let's recite the family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajon men se o Chonyukuk Chuin Uri Kajogun Cham Sarangul Chunshimago Mail Chichok Chansan Segewa Te Sanchok Chisan Sege Toyl Kanghe Chonjin Chok Palchon Choksinal Kosil Men se Hanaida. Family pledge number five. Our family, the owner of Chongmulguk, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on true love. Okay. Uh, maybe ask Daniel again to offer the opening prayer. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Dearest Heavenly Parents, beloved true parents of heaven and earth, I'm so grateful to be here together today, sharing in fellowship with our brothers and sisters and centering upon our Heavenly Parent and true parents. We wish to begin this morning with the uh, words of our true mother, our true parents, and we are so grateful for Reverend Yutaka to uh, give us deeper insight into uh, the words of our true mother. We really pray, Heavenly Parents, that you'll inspire us and guide us and that through our morning hundoke, we can walk uh, with you throughout this day. We really pray, Heavenly Parent and True Parents, that we may be able to unite with you, be guided by you, and that with all our absolute good spirits and angels in the company of heaven, that we may be able to really achieve, Heavenly Parents, what it is you desire us to do this day. So we so grateful for all your love all your care and we really pray for our true mother we really pray for her as she is really working hard and suffering each day in order for the providence and the will to be accomplished we pray heavenly parents that we will be able to ease her heart and be able to protect her smile and bring victory for her heavenly parents and for all humankind so we thank you so much, Heavenly Parents and True Parents, and may we now join together as brothers and sisters centering upon your word. I pray and report in all of our names, in my name, Penny Meadows, and Chisery Meadows, and the Meadows of the Central Family, uh, to... Thank you. Let's uh, give a warm welcome to uh, Reverend Yutaka as he shares with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, uh, brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming this morning. Uh, this is also a great day, already Saturday. I feel every time I'm think, talking about today is Saturday, one week is finished and new day, new week will come. So how was uh, really this week? How was, what kind of week did you spend? End of the day, end of the week, we will lift, reflect the time and also offer chanson and prepare for the new day and new week then we could find with heavenly parents, true parents, and we could connect our heart and inherit our heavenly parents and true parents' heart. So let's offer the sincere devotion and prayer and let's begging great day together with our heavenly parents. So we have to develop every day. Yet today is more than yesterday. Tomorrow is better than today. And next week, next month, and next week, next year, we have to grow and we have to develop. So this time, centering on our True Father's Son Fast ceremony, especially this month, this time period, the two bigger events is prepared. So first one, maybe as you know, September 12th, our seventh rally of hope. So this event, one of the uh, biggest event. So not only just joining as the participant, we will invite the people and to create this event to be successful together. So 
there is new poster already, so I want to introduce the poster. So Think Tank 2022, Rally of Hope, Lord of the Heavenly Unified Korea. So this is September 12, 2021, 9.30 a.m. Korean time is 10.30 a.m. Uh, Sydney time, right? So this 10.30, just after eight days, this will be happened. So September 12, actually September 12 is the inauguration anniversary of Universal Peace Federation. So this is also the same day of the celebration. So we have to celebrate well. So can you see this one? Think Tank 2022 Rally of Hope. Honorable Excellency Donald Trump, 45th President of the United States. So he already decided to give a speech as a keynote address. And Honorable Excellency Samdek Hun Sen, Prime Minister of Cambodia, current Prime Minister. So every time he really support the mother because really not easy things, even he accepted he working together, but as the prime minister, every time receive our request and come together, work together, is really not easy things. And we know him well, he's really famous in the world level, some good way or some another way. So in the Cambodia, but really he respect mother and he really love uh, our Universal Peace Federation and our peace movement. That's why even he had a meeting with Dr. Yoon by online, by I'm not sure Zoom or some online, online, they have also meeting directly and discussing together. So this time also uh, he will become the speaker. And also Honorable Excellency Jose Manuel Barroso. So he's 11th president of the European Commission. So you know him also. And Honorable Excellency Mohamed Bazom, president of the Republic of Niger. So he also coming. And also Honorable Excellency Denis Sasso Gueso, President of the Republic of Congo. So this is also, looks like his uh, presidential time is really long, 1979 to 1992, 1997 until now. Uh, how many years? A really long time, a uh, president. And also, actually one more person, our president, Aloyo, former president Aloyo from Philippines, she will also give the speech as the keynote speaker. So each famous president, prime minister is joining together and also Trimada. At this point in time, a new movement must arise, a movement of people attending God, our creator, at the center of our effort to resolve all these problems and look forward to a bright future. So our Dr. Hak Chambun, a true mother, is also the speaker. So this time, a Rally of Hope Think Tank 2022 is the important event, September 12th. So those information or those material is coming. And maybe I think some video is also coming. So each national leader, please also share those information to our brothers and sisters and also uh, share to your friend, relative, ambassador for peace and everyone to support and make it together. And one of another main event is October 4th and 5th. I'm every day emphasizing about this one. Our part Pacific Christian Leadership Conference, Inauguration Conference. So already Facebook was created. So have you visited to our Facebook, PCLC? Not yet. Please also national leader share this yes. Facebook. So this is the first page of Facebook. There is a Bible quote, Romans 12, 5. So we being many, 
are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. So now we are creating and developing those material also. So already the registration form was created. So already you can start to invite and now flyer and some video we are creating now and even invitation letter. So also designing, we are creating designing also several things. This is first one. The second one, third one is continuously coming. So our motto, our main theme is this, stand together, one family and God. So simple, right? Stand together, let's stand together. So stand together, one family and God. Pacific Christian Leadership Conference, inaugural rally, October 5th. So October 4, we have a convocation centering on the three topics. The pastor or minister or leader come and give the speech. And next day, uh, October 5th, we are preparing inaugural rally together with three mother. So we are preparing those environment now. So please also pray and also support. And tomorrow, Sunday service time, our president, Hori, and Dr. Kito will give the special message about Pacific Christian Leadership Conference significant and also the meaning of PCLC. So please everyone join together and listen the word and prepare ourselves. So oh, this month, there is several important things. So especially this PCLC inside of Oceania, if we could fulfill, establish this one, uh, we could give, this one will give the big influence or changing in this our region, and we can connect all our region directly, support Heavenly Unified Korea and Heavenly Unified World. Of course, we have many kinds of field to fulfill in each place. Heavenly Tribal Messiah and also Universal Peace Federation or Christian Society, interreligious side, many kind of place, but one by one, there is a special meaning. So this inauguration conference is not only fulfilled and finished only by inauguration conference. Important things is after that, after inauguration, we will connect all Christian community or society also and to create the model of he Heavenly Parents Holy Community. So Universal Peace Federation, Women's Federation, YSP, Family Federation, there are several many associate brotherhood, sisterhood organization. So each field, each organization will create the strong foundation. So PCLC is going more internal side to connect our religious Christian society, Christian heart. And also this will work together with Asia Pacific Union, those more external side. And finally, everything come together under one umbrella of heavenly parents, holy community. So under this vision, we are now going together. So let's offer our sincere heart. So let's start to our Honda K, mother of peace. So now we are sharing about heart of Jesus and also talking about only begotten son and only begotten daughter. So our true father as only begotten son who inherited the mission of Jesus and continuously go forward to protect true mother, guide true mother and fulfill the mission as true parents. So in the history, only true father is the one who came as on the only begotten son and fulfill the mission of Messiah, second coming, true parents, and also king of kings. So we could see our true father's life. And also true mother, she came on this earth as only begotten daughter and totally united with true father, absolute love, absolute faith, absolute obedience, and to unite with true father, 
and fulfill the mission as true parents. So when we see the history, also she is the first person, first woman, woman to fulfill the role of woman and victory as only that the only begotten daughter. So under heavenly parents' guidance, our father and madam were born in Korean Peninsula and to lead the whole province. So continue to the next part. When the Korean War broke out in 1950, South Korea was completely unprepared to defend itself against North Korean's attack. But heaven protected me. 16 UN member nations joined the war, which was nothing short of a miracle. At that time, the Soviet Union was a member of the UN Security, uh, Security Council. If the Soviet Union had vetoed the resolution, the 16 nations would not have been able to participate in the war in a dramatic twist of fate. However, the Soviet Union representative was absent from the UN Security Council meeting when the vote was taken. This ensured the participation of UN troops in the war. So nobody expected, nobody imagined about Korean War. This suddenly happened. Suddenly North Korea attacked to South Korea. So can you imagine that time, 1950, just after ending of World War II, so all nation was preparing and focusing to develop all nation, how to solve and how to develop, how to create the new nation. That was that atmosphere. So who imagined the new war would, would be happened? So 1948, officially North Korea and South Korea established the independent government by oneself and the division of Korean Peninsula was decided in 1948. So that time to father was in North Korea and to mother finally could flee to South Korea that time. So around that environment, North Korea decided to attack South Korea. So Mada is sharing about the UN story. So UN troop was decided to support and help South Korea. Then because of them, finally South Korea could push back North Korea to North side and could protect the South Korea. So there is many history, the Soviet Union history or story we heard this one. If Soviet Union vetoed that time to oppose, to send the UN troop to Korean Peninsula, then already we could not see South Korea anymore. And even UN troop supported to South Korea, but if they delay even few days more, maybe three days, five days, even they delay, already North Korea uh, had would, would have taken over the South Korea. So that kind of severe situation was happened. So heaven guided those providence and finally to father also escaped from North Korea to South Korea. So this war was going and ended and stopped temporarily. Actually now, in Korean Peninsula, they this Korean War was not ended yet. This official diplomatic relationship, their relationship status is kind of the stopping of the war, not ending yet. So still they are standing of both position. That's why they are ending war between North and South Korea officially. This is the way to create the peace and way to show the peace vision to also the world. God anointed my husband and me as the true parents in 1960. Since then, we have cultivated blessed families of all races, nations, and religions. Now, religious leaders in all parts of the world 
uh, one with three parents and are multiplying the blessing ceremony in early 2018 at the Africa Summit in Senegal, a Muslim country, I ask that Africa work together with me to uphold heaven's will. So God anointed my husband and me as the two parents in 1960. From that time, two parents offer the whole life and offer whole life for God and human beings. So the human beings on this earth, everyone is actually one family under God. So this vision is special vision we had many times but we have to think again the meaning of this vision all people when we go out from the house we could see many people but actually they are our brother and sisters and our family members when we see another country looks like they have no relation with myself but they are also our family, our brother and sisters. So centering on this vision, not only just as the slogan, as the motto, centering on vision, we will create and visualize and realize this vision as the real situation. So guiding all religious leader and political leader gather together to make one and join together. This is our Three parents' life, and this is our heavenly parents' providence. So, through blessing, all people can come again as one heaven's blood lineage and one family. Heads of state, tribe chiefs, and religious leaders of all faith express their wholehearted support in Europe, Buddhist as well as Christian religious leaders are bringing their congregation to receive the blessing. Muslim have aligned themselves with the only begotten daughter. The same is true of Christian in the United States. We now approach the final task, which cannot be delayed. I must open the age of Chonikuk. Chonikuk is a Korean term signifying God's peace kingdom in which to become one through love. So in the world level, head of states and the tribe chiefs and religious leader of all faith express their wholehearted support. So they are coming together. They are proclaiming and announced to work together with our three parents' vision, work together with Mother Moon. So beyond region, Europe, Africa, America, and each place beyond the region, they are accepting and working together, centering on our true parents. What is the idea? What is the vision of Chonikuk? Finally, everyone beyond the nation, beyond the border of religion, we will create one village of earth. We will create the one bigger village, bigger family on this earth. So, can you imagine if those nations, those up environment world would be happened? How much beautiful. We don't need passport anymore. We don't need any kind of barrier anymore. Even wherever we go, we can support, visit, and freely go any place. So who are stopping? Who are disturbing? Who are, who are stopping this kind of movement? We want to create one family under God and one, one, one big environment on this earth beyond the nation. Who can stop and who is stopping these things? There are 194 nations and in order to restore those nations, how we will do? Through mother said, through father said, in order to restore all nations and all world, no need to invest 194 nations. What Father said, minimum, how many nations we need to invest and restore? Do you remember this Father's message? Minimum, how many nations then we could fulfill? Let me show this one. Father said, if three nations are restored, the world 
will become unified. If three nations are restored, the world will be unified automatically. So we must start such a movement and open an era of tribal messiahship and one religion based on a vertical standard on the worldwide horizontal stage. We must make the environment which puts God at the center so all humanity can live with God. Otherwise, there is no way for the kingdom of heaven to be realized on earth. So first three nation, how three, three nation will be restored? Then world restoration will be fulfilled automatically. Do you believe that? Is really fulfilled or not? So Father is talking three minimum. This is minimum, but this three things. So this is really the vision. So next year, Trimada is preparing the peace summit in Korea. And already the prime minister of Cambodia, he, he decided to be the chairman. And one more famous person will be come. And this person's name will be proclaimed on September 12th, as I mentioned yesterday. So some kind of an influential person joined together. So can you imagine now this current prime minister will send the invitation letter to 194 nations, then what's happened? If NGO leader will send the invitation letter to the head of states, maybe they don't respond or they might ignore. But one of the current prime minister officially sent through the government channel to 194 nations, then even they don't join. They should reply even any kind of response. That's why among the 194 nations, surely someone joined together. So if those head of states, not only one head of states, if three head of states, five current head of states send a letter or say the same voice and to invite the people, really what happened in the world level, one by one, current prime minister, current government also start to come and support this influence is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So that era already has arrived. And this vision itself is this vision is nothing relating to the world. Of course, all nation is not coming together. But how is the vision? One family, all nation create one piece together for the world, the people on the world, on the on the earth. This vision itself actually also great vision. And mother, father emphasize to accept heavenly parents. That's why, because of heaven's vision, people could start to accept and working together. So everyone wish peace, not only national level. Everyone wish peace in the world level. But until now in the history, who really try to create world peace? Not only slogan, who really had initiated together with the result, together with foundation. This is only our true parents. And now mother is standing center of providence on this earth, on this universe, and leading this whole history. So we could see this changing moment. It is a new age, and we need to put on new clothes. As a citizen of Chonikuk, we need the clothing of filial piety in our family patriotism in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth. I am on earth to speak the historical truth, and I am neither hesitant nor reserved about it. At the August 2018 Latin America World Summit held in Brazil, I compared today's Christianity to an unfertilized egg that will not yield life. So Trimada is sharing about the new era, new life and new clothes. So we have to remove, we have to throw away all the concept of foreign culture, foreign thinking, foreign concept, and we will become God's original 
son and daughters, and we will become God children. So mother said, as citizens of Chonikuk, we need the clothing of filial piety in our family, patriotism in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth. And mother said, I told this to a large number of denominational and religious leaders, including a Catholic cardinal. I said clearly that present day religions can bring forth life, forth life only by accepting true parents and receiving and sharing the marriage blessing. No one objected to my words. Receiving the true parents is the essential purpose of every religion. To fulfill my mission as the only begotten daughter, the true mother, and the mother of the universe, I must give rebirth to the nearly 8 billion people on earth as God's true children. So mother, Kantiasri, is proclaiming about the mission, vision, and also role, and our heavenly parents and true parents, begotten son and begotten daughter. What is the heaven's wish what is the God's original ideal of creation? And what is the uh, ideal of blessing? So continuously sharing all people on this earth is actually son and daughter under heavenly parents and brother and sisters. Without receiving three parents' blessing, they cannot be born as the heaven's uh, lineage. So those message, how many people we should share and proclaim and introduce this message, not only for 1,000 people, not only 10,000, 100,000 people, even not only 1 million people, we have to share this message to 8 billion people, then, let, then we should them to connect to our heavenly parents. The Bible says, whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. As a child is born of the Father's seed in the mother's womb, we are born from God's seed in the mother of the universe. The people who deny their mother will neither prosper here nor the world in the next world. I am the true mother who brings new life. My heart is always open and I forgive, not just seven times, but 70 times seven. So mother is talking that. And actually also in Korean book site, there is one expression, mother said, even any kind of person without coming to the only begotten daughter, they cannot connect. So mother is emphasized even without, except, without exception, all people have to come through our true mother, mother of peace, then they can be born as the new children. So mother is strongly proclaiming this message. So as a child is born of the father's seed in the mother's womb, we are born from God's seed in the mother of the universe. So father sharing and created the new history in, on this earth and mother is trying to conclude the providence. So we could see those are true parents investment and true parents life. And now really we are living the special historical era. So each single moment is the new beginning and the creation of the new history. So now Trimada is really investing with urgent heart to save, proclaim, and to reach the end of the world. Now true parents is here. Now every parents is waiting for us. We have to realize, we have to unite together, and we have to create one world together with all brothers and sisters on this earth not only just one nation, not only just one religious, this world matter is the matter for all people. That's why mother is sharing all our religious leader, 
political leader, they have to come together beyond own benefit, beyond own interest. Everyone has to come together to create peace. This message three parents continuously shared already from early time, 1970, 1980, 1990, 2000, 2010, continuously. And now current head of states or top leader started to accept and come together one by one. We are living special era. So we will go together and create. Of course, in order to fulfill, there is also responsibility for each of us and each of person. But surely there is a way. Already we are open. We could see many different things. So let's put our sincere devotion, heart and investment. Let's create the new world and new nation. So today also we are sharing about the mother's autobiography, how and what kind of day we will spend, what kind of week, what kind of months. Let's prepare our heart and connect with our heavenly parents. Let's offer the happiness and victory to our heavenly parents and true parents. Thank you for joining once again this Sunday. Okay. Let's have a great time. Thank you very much. Kamsamida. Thank you very much, Reverend Yataka, as always. You know, really you know, bringing so much knowledge and, and heart. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was uh, reflecting on these words and a few things uh, came, came to my mind. Uh, uh, right at the beginning, uh, Reverend Yataka uh, spoke about the coming events and uh, mentioned the Rally of Hope. And I just wanted to point out that uh, the Rally of Hope has his only presidents. <laughs> There's three current presidents and three former presidents. It's the highest level uh, Rally of Hope we've had or going to have. You know, everyone is, is the, the leader of the nation. So uh, I, I was reflecting on uh, a few things you know, like, uh, we, we hear that you know, Jesus is the King of Kings. And then it occurred to me, of course, uh, our true mother is the Queen of Queens. Uh, with this, uh, uh, because of, you know, she, she is the, the, the wife of, of heaven. And uh, I, I also was uh, reflecting on uh, you know, why are we forgiven if we say something uh, against the son, but not not against the daughter and uh it's uh you yeah, know why uh, it's it's because uh i i because mother goes on in that that last uh, part saying that the seed of uh, father is in the mother and the, the the seed of god is within the the mother of the universe and so you can forgive uh, someone who goes against the son because it just stops at that moment. It, it doesn't doesn't multiply, and so uh, can easily, in one way, uh, forgive their actions. But something that affects uh, the daughter, you know, the Holy Spirit or the Mother of the Universe, affects how things are multiplied. So if you go against that, uh, then you're actually uh, perpetuating. Uh, the hell on earth and and that's just like repeating uh, the fall over and over again uh, and and mother clearly said you know, that people who deny their mother uh, will not uh, uh, fare well in their life and they 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 will also not fare well in 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 the in the spirit world and uh, I don't know if that's a uh, direct because uh, I'm sure mother's sons are reading this and uh, yeah I don't know how they will interpret that yeah but uh, mother is clearly saying that people who deny their mother you know, is you know, won't have a uh, a good experience or life so uh, so yeah so God is uh, the other things that, that were in there was three nation and one religion. 
you know, need to be uh, restored uh, and you know, through tribal messiah and, and to you know, bring about Chong Yul Guk, you know, you know, God's peace kingdom where two become one through love. And uh, I also felt uh, how God was anguishing and waiting for so long to finally uh, anoint. Because uh, Mother also said that God anointed my husband and me, you know, and that was at 1960 blessing. You know, that, you know, they were sent, they were chosen, uh, they, they, did, they did their responsibilities, but uh, the anointing happened at the blessing. So God could finally approve and acknowledge you know, Adam and Eve you know, that they longed to do at the very beginning. So, yeah, uh, as, as always, you know, each little slide that we see of Mother's words, every one of them, you, you could spend much, much longer on each slide and expand you know, on all of the you know, the depth that the, they have. So thank you, everyone, and thank you, Reverend Yutaka. Who would like to share? Yeah, yes, we've got Daniel over there, putting his hand up, or Chizuru, having a little battle. What a good reflection. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she said that uh, she's she she just on what you were saying about uh, the only begotten daughter. She was saying how it's true that you know um, God is is like because he's subject. He's like the father, and so when the daughters are always the cutest thing for for the father. So uh, he Shizuru was saying how precious true mother is to God, um, and she was just kind of marveling at that. And I was pushing her to share. <laughs> <laughs> so true, and she's hiding behind her daughter. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, Doug, go ahead. Oh, and, and probably Jeff after. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the most important things that ever happened to me in my whole lifetime. Uh, when I was in the Navy, I had a lot of time alone on ship and I did a lot of thinking about the life in this world. And uh, I, I turned to God about it and I had about five prayers that, that I was looking for. And every one of those five prayers were answered, you know? even specific prayers like to love President Nixon, I actually put my, my hand on the back of his neck, you know? Uh, but one of the most important prayers that I made was I asked, uh, I wanted to find hope for the world that everyone could be resurrected. I had a Catholic background and you know, this whole theory of heaven and hell and, uh, you know, it was, it was too weird for me. So I prayed to God that he could give me some hope about restoring fallen people that are really broken. So I asked God, please help me to understand the most broken hearted person in the world. That was one of those five prayers. And I really, I, I, I made it very sincere, very strong over a period of time. And uh, that's uh, not a smart prayer to, uh, to ask. You have to be very careful. I was really naive and ignorant and stupid. You'd never make a prayer like that. <laughs> but I did at 20 years of age. And um, the, the prayers, that one in particular, um, I, I remember trying to help uh, a, a homeless woman on a bench in New York City. And uh, she resisted my help. And on the third time, she hissed at me, you know. And it was really an unbelievable experience. And I, I wanted to know what in the world, why can't someone receive this open-hearted help? So then the prayer that I had made about the most broken person, I felt that unless we can restore the most broken person, humanity really has no value to me. You have, to, it's like a whole chain. 
if the weakest link is broken and can't be repaired, to me, the whole thing is, is no good. Because we were brought into this existence without our request, you know, and, and something has to be done about it. So anyway, how, how God taught me, I think I had a lot of um, um, religious people in my background, you know, um, not all good. Uh, and they might have misunderstood predestination, heaven and hell, and so um, something like that. But I um, read. I, I was on this. I was on this ship, and and uh, I had converted to Christianity. But I was surrounded by fundamentalist Christians. So every question I had to ask, I, I really had to listen to what they were saying. I had talked to every kind of religion for for quite a while. But the Christians had me alone on this ship. And every time I, I was reading the Bible, you know, um, they, they gave me an answer that just inflamed me and gave me upset, got me upset. So um, one time I was reading in the Bible and I said, uh, the unforgivable sin is to blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And I heard a blaspheme against the Holy Spirit in my mind. And that... Uh, just started to uh, obsess and I got scared and actually I got alienated and freaked out to the extent that I actually had a full-scale um, nervous breakdown and for two years God had left me his personality his warmth even when I was an atheist I, I had God in me when looking back upon now, I can see it, but God left my heart. I was frozen. I could not cry. I could not emote myself. I, I have his heart. It lasted for two years, you know, and um, I inherited an understanding of self-hate, of pain, fear that you can't even imagine. And it just stayed with me. I would have committed suicide just like that, except for I thought that I would go to hell, go to sleep, wake up and just go, to, you know, then I would just go on and on. So I, I tried to just stay alive, but I lost all my energy. I lost my motivation. I lost my happiness. I had memories and fears of things that just uh, freaked me out. Uh, everything that I had gone through just crippled me, you know, and then all of a sudden, slowly but surely, at the end of two years, uh, mine, things came back into my mind, you know, and I was able to, like, uh, a voice said to me, he says, do you remember when you asked to help that woman? Do you remember when you asked to understand the most brokenhearted person in the world, you know? And then uh, it was explained to me that, do you remember the, the um, one, one very graphic, memory came to me of a tree and it it uh, uprooted itself from the ground turned upside down and went right through the top of my head right down to my bottom of the feet that was um symbolic later on i realized of um uh like inherited sins you know and collective sins and personal sin it just i just inherited a lot of burden from my ancestors during that period of time and then um, slowly I, I was able to hear thought forces. And then um, eventually uh, God said to me, he says, you will see the Elijah. And uh, I, I thought I would be like a madman, you know, <laughs> when I saw the Elijah, but he said, you will see the Elijah. And then you have to go to um, Philadelphia, Washington and Miami in that order. And it said, um, go to Philadelphia and find out um, how this nation, the USA was brought into existence. And um, then go to Washington and see what has become of this nation. And then go to Miami and become an electrician because I was an aviation electrician's mate. So at that time I was living in my brother's house after having gotten out of the Navy and um, and, and um, I couldn't explain to him that someone had just told me to go to um, Philadelphia, Washington, and Miami. 
So I had 40 cents in my pocket. I left the following day without telling him, you know, and um, then um, with a very heavy heart that had lasted with me for two years, I wound up um, hitchhiking through Niagara and Syracuse down to Philadelphia. I arrived in Philadelphia two days later and um, sequential amazing things happened along the way where I was able to make money. I got rides, I had a place to stay. And I got to Philadelphia and I was witnessed to by a poster, you know, uh, it said God's hope for man, God's hope for America, God's hope for the future of world Christianity. And it was a picture of his oriental minister. And I said, wow, I've never seen an oriental minister. I've never asked an oriental about Christianity. So I pledged right then and there, I'm going to stay. He's going to speak. In, that's 21 days from today. So I said, okay. I'm going to stay here and I'm going to uh, uh, listen to him. And uh, then I walked down about a block and it was a for rent sign. And I got to this house and I knocked on the door and a lady opened. She looked at me about 90. I was only 20. She was probably 70. But I explained to her I was looking for God and I have no money and I would need a place to stay. And she welcomed me right in. <laughs> and um, I just went into my room and I prayed and um, I did a 21 day cold bath condition, but everything was just sequentially synchronistically happening for me. And then from that pain that I had for the two years, a lot of it had begun to subside and I started to think more clearly. And then uh, there were hundreds of members all over Philadelphia. And I finally met someone from Rhodesia um, an English background person. And when he spoke to me, even though many, many, many people spoke to me and I spoke to them, uh, he wanted, he said, I'll do, he, I told him I was going to see father. So he said, I'll do anything to have you hear the divine principle before um, you see father, you know? And then something happened on the back of my neck that had been there for two years. So I listened to the divine principle and it went on and on like that. But I'm, I'm just bringing this up because that, that, that story, uh, even, even though it's in the past, it had a lifelong effect on me, that pain that I went through. Every day of my life, I think of that pain, but I still exist. And I've, I've worked through it. But it's a, <laughs> it, it was something that I just... Um, it, 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 it fractured me, you know, to such an extent that um, I'm still healing from it, you know, but I'm so grateful uh, for having had that experience because it's all been part of the course that I've gone on. And it's just, um, I'm, I'm happy, you know, uh, because I know I didn't do that. <laughs> and, and I do want to just mention how serious it is. And I'm aware of how many people crumbled under such Christian doctrines as predestination and um, trials like that over that thing. Uh, people have really gone crazy you know, off the wall. So I had to mention that story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. And uh, go, go ahead, Jeff. You're the last person to, to speak today. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Uh, very hard to top that one, Douglas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, many can relate to your story as everyone has had their pathway to meet your parents, especially we're here today. Uh, we have gone through many, uh, many mountain passes to get here. Um, anyway, my reflection uh, has been coming, uh, especially just the last few days, incredible pressure. I don't know how everybody feels, but um, there's just so much pressure from every quarter. And... Um, and I feel that uh, it's really the birth pangs. And uh, a woman uh, knows she cannot stop the pressure until that baby comes out. Uh, there's no like, uh, let's have no pressure and let the baby just sit there. It's got to come out. So um, bring on the pressure. And um, until mother is recognized, this pressure will continue. Uh, there's no way around this. It's just happening. And... Uh, so um, I'm so inspired to see the, the poster that uh, Reverend Yamada put up. I just looked at that and thought, that is great, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, just uh, 
in my Christian prayer group, one man just uh, talked about a revelation that was given to a man in New Zealand 30 years ago, or around about that time, anyway, 1982 at the time, and uh, saying that God was preparing New Zealand uh, to show a great model to the world, and uh, that New Zealand was going to go through a terrible economic crisis in the future. And uh, because people have been just enjoying their material well-being and, uh, and so forth. And so I can see now that prophecy becoming true because we are now in the, um, mm. the next lockdown in New Zealand. All the businesses are closed. And already I went to a seminar a few months ago. They said, if we have another lockdown, it's going to destroy New Zealand's economy. The economists are talking about that. So they're just printing money, you know. So, yeah, that economic crisis has come. And uh, everyone is just completely stressed out. There's fights and families. There's COVID and there's vaccine or no vaccine. And <laughs> everything is happening. So uh, anyway, we are being born. So <laughs> that, that's my reflection. So uh, let's hope it's a good birth soon. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So it's time to pray together. So let's uh, pray that everyone can truly receive our true mother. So I'll just uh, share the screen. Let's try it together.
adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day and see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah bye, everyone. Yeah, bye. 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 God bless. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. bye.